Welcome back. My last video was on the JVC KD-D55, a three-head cassette deck. And this is the JVC R-X80 digital synthesizer stereo receiver with quartz lock tuner. So, so an ampli tuner from 1982 with a five-band graphic equalizer and a tape monitor for the three-head deck. So this video is a separate video and not a part two of the JVC KD-D55 cassette deck video, but a closer look at the amp. And here it is in its resting position. I'll turn it on a bit later on. The amp is rated at 80 watts per channel. And I've got it connected to some Pioneer's S-Z81D uh, speakers. Let's have a look inside the JVC R-X80. A hefty aluminium heatsink and a hefty transformer can be seen in the right hand corner. Just how hefty the transformer is will be revealed on a tag on the back with its power consumption. More on that later. The internal aluminium heat sink and the vent holes on the bottom of the cabinet are aligned with the heat sink fins to help with cooling. However, I suspect it still gets pretty warm inside the cabinet if you use the amp to its capacity. This is the back of the fascia with all its controls and guys be careful when opening equipment like this these capacitors here on the right the black ones they could still hold a lot of uh, current so um, yeah be careful and while I have it open I might as well clean the potentiometers on this unit there are five potentiometers for the equalizer and one for the balance so six all up this is service oil electrical clean and lube similar to deoxid and i sprayed it into the uh, equalizer pots and uh, just working in one by one like that until all of them have been cleaned and lubed up. And these are the specs for the amp. Let's check out the back of the unit and the tag I was talking about earlier. And here it goes, the amp can use up to 500 watts of power. Speaker outputs for speakers A and speakers B, left and right. And the black cylindrical object in the middle of the screen is the external AM antenna, which is adjustable. In the top left hand corner are various external antenna connections. As far as the inputs go, Starting from the left to the right, a phono for your record player, video auxiliary for connecting your VCR, tape one for cassette deck on RCA plugs as well as DIN plug, tape two for a second cassette deck or a reel to reel tape recorder, and a remote control socket. And it's, of course, made in Japan. Let's check out if anything works on it and turn it on. This is the output from the cassette deck. And yeah, those input selector buttons seem to have some sort of problem. 
and the amp is in radio mode and tape mode at the same time by looks of things. So this stage looks like it's not all good with the amp and it's um, selected. On the buttons I've selected radio but it's still connected to the cassette deck itself and it switches in between the two. I haven't sprayed any service all into those um, selected buttons there because simply you can't get to it, it's all behind the circuit board. But if it all worked properly this is how you would uh, tune the radio to the tuning button there. No FM radio antenna connected, so it's not going to find any FM stations. But it does have an external antenna for AM, so it shouldn't be a problem finding an AM station on here. I'm going to turn off the cassette on the deck and let the amp or the tuner and catch the radio by itself without interference from the deck since you can't separate the two. This is a station memory selector and this panel comes off with this grid and I think um, you should be able to or you could put some different labels in there for the stations that you have uh, programmed or something like that. I can't see any other reason for that coming off. There's just globes or LEDs. I think they're globes behind there. The 5 band equalizer is 63 hertz, 250 hertz, 1 kilohertz, 4 kilohertz and 16 kilohertz. Below that is the switches for speakers A and speakers B. This amp has two tape monitors presumably one for a cassette deck and the other one for a reel-to-reel -reel machine. Yeah, would, uh, would he be eating in that film, you know, at the same time? That's kind of his, his trademark. Yeah, apparently, um, uh, Tony... Here I'm just switching between speakers A and speakers B and both outputs work. This is a balance slider. The selector buttons are for uh, tape monitor 1, the video auxiliary, phono, FM and AM. Two tape monitor buttons for two tape decks, a loudness button and a mono stereo switch. And an interesting feature is a switch for the phono that selects between magnetic and ceramic cartridges and while using just one input at the back of the um, hand. So that's a bit unusual. Normally the radio amplifier, whatever, works um, and the cassette deck doesn't, but in this case it's a bit, um, so even. And this is what's behind the station memory panel, just a bunch of globes. And you can't exactly put your finger in there to change the globes. So I'm just guessing it's removable to change the labels on the front of the panel. And a close-up of the display. And it's pretty cool how it lights up. As it does. 
thanks for watching and see you next other previous video